believe in the power of music, music is my life. Hello everyone. My name is Richard Yongjae O'Neill and I play the viola. The coronavirus has brought many negative things. Life before corona. I used to perform concerts all over the world, traveling constantly, sharing my music with people around the world. It was my lifelong passion. And then March happened and a deep winter has come and frozen the musical lives of musicians all across the globe. From New York to London, within a few weeks this past March, musical performances stopped. Every performance on every continent was canceled. Musicians everywhere were instantly sidelined. Entire seasons of concerts were abandoned. Theaters, concert halls, and opera houses went dark and furloughs, layoffs, and bankruptcies began. For the first time in my professional career, I had absolutely no concerts. There were no re-engagements. My calendar was completely blank. Back at home in Los Angeles, I wrestled with the challenge of being out of work for the first time in my life. Mm. How long would concerts be canceled? When would it be safe for audiences to return to the concert hall? The news kept getting worse and worse. But then an invitation came from Korea. Uh, not from a concert hall, but from a hospital. And it was my first invitation to play in public, and, but it would require me to fly for 20 hours through multiple airports and uh, upon my arrival here in Korea would require me to quarantine for two weeks in complete self-isolation. However, this challenge, um, how daunting it seemed to be by myself yet another two weeks and to risk my health being on a plane for that long, I didn't even think twice about coming. When you were playing in the hospital, I think you had like some tears in your eyes as well, but um, you still finished your play until the very end. What was in your heart, what was in your mind in that moment when you, when you played there? Uh, an overwhelming sense of gratitude and um, a gratitude for the doctors and the nurses and a gratitude to be allowed to make music once more. And that, that moment was very special. I'll, I'll treasure that moment for a very long time. Being in isolation for two weeks prior, this was literally the first day I was out of um, isolation. I don't know how many people here have gone through that experience, but after two months of being at home being isolated and then flying across the world and then being isolated again, um, but with not the ability to go out my door and I was literally locked in a room, it, it, you, you start, you miss people, you miss. And so 
So for me to be back in that experience, back with people making music, which I feel like I've been born to do, it's my job, it's my calling, it was just, it was, it was overwhelming. Two months, I've missed making music so much. The entire world is facing a terrible crisis right now, and I'm very happy, proud of Korea. I come from a multicultural family uh, in America. I was uh, my mother, Ibok Soon. Uh, was adopted into the United States after the Korean War, after she was orphaned by my American grandparents, Perry and Mildred O'Neill. They raised my mother and myself as if we were their own family. Growing up in a small rural area of the United States gave me a first-hand perspective into the microcosm that is America, to be more specific, small-town America. Racism in the United States has always been and is still a deep-rooted problem. For me, I was bullied and teased for my appearance, told to go back to my country, and most hurtful of all, insulted vicariously through my mother for her mental condition. It was hard not to feel like I was fundamentally different and not in a good way. I sought refuge and solace in my family, my studies, and music. Learning to play the violin at a young age. In music, I found a place where I belonged. There were no judgments, misunderstandings, or hate, just pure communication. No matter how I was feeling, once I closed my eyes and I started making music, I could lose myself and escape. Within this year, I am witnessing a similar situation that I faced as a child during this pandemic. Harsh rhetoric, discrimination, and hate crimes against Asians have skyrocketed across the globe. Mm. For some, Asians are to blame for the coronavirus. Rather than viewing science, some have turned to hysteria and unsubstantiated claims. Instead of uniting and coming up with a global solution, to the virus we have fractured, devolving into blame and rage. Higher infection rates and all at a horrific human cost. As a young man and aspiring musician from limited means, there were many moments of my life that I lived in great doubt where the risk of complete failure was ever present. The worldwide global music community is facing a similar challenge today. Perched at the top of a dangerous precipice, frozen with severe restrictions and paralyzing parameters, some of our most beloved institutions are facing the existential crisis of our time, and we run the risk of losing even more of our beloved art institutions that have served and inspired countless generations. For my fellow artists, I would ask of you, what can you do for your audience during this challenging time when our prescribed way of communicating has been forbidden? How can we keep music relevant, powerful, and perhaps most importantly, for everyone to enjoy? How can we keep making music while being silenced? And for our beloved, dear audience, I would ask for all of those moments that your souls were comforted, spirits lifted, imagination set free, what can you do now to support those artists whom have shown you a glimpse of the sublime? Can you imagine your life without music? There is a real possibility that some of the artists that you cherish and enjoy might not make it through this crisis. So what do the coronavirus and music have in common? So what do 
the coronavirus and music have in common? Well, one commonality is that both affirm the interconnectedness of all beings, our inextricable, inextricable bonds to one another. We are a global community, and what affects one of us affects all of us. Music is our universal language, and COVID is our shared burden. How will we overcome this virus together? regular season post or pre-COVID, we would have toured the world with over 80 performances a year, often several months abroad to musical capitals of Europe and Asia. What happened in reality is when I first joined the quartet this June, my debut with the quartet was cancelled and important performances for venues such as Lincoln Center were immediately cancelled. Our month-long tour of Australia was immediately um, uh, uh, disposed of. Well, the solution that we've come up with as a quartet is live stream performances. Audiences can virtually attend our concerts from the safety of their own home with personalized Q&A sessions, in-depth interviews, close-up camera angles, and superior audio quality. And it's been a wonderful gift to all of our audiences worldwide to have been able to experience our quartet in a new um, and innovative way. Another bright spot upon returning to the United States this summer was my return to academia. It has been a tremendous challenge to have online, I mean, um, in-person teaching this um, semester, which has had very, very many challenges, but has been um, deeply, deeply rewarding. While the experience has been very challenging at this time, I, the ability to work with Music, students, is just beyond, and I'm so grateful. Um, during this challenging time, uh, I live with the hope that artists around the world will find a way to share their music, no matter what obstacles they may face. Technology has made sharing music possible anywhere in the world. I ask all musicians to do their best to try and find their own unique way to share their music and their important gifts with their audience. Cataclysm and catastrophe are part of the human condition. As artists, innovators, and leaders, we must evolve or dissolve. Let us all take this moment to reaffirm the importance and power of music. Music is eternal, and its pure and potent message will always speak to people. We all need art. This is the time that artists must adapt to reach our audience. The need for music and culture has not been affected by the coronavirus. We must find a way to keep music and the performing arts alive. Nothing can replace experience music live, especially in our great concert halls around the world. But, but we must not use this as, as an excuse to not find new ways to share our music. We are all in this together. This is not a zero-sum total match. This is our collective battle to keep the arts alive and relevant. Let's take care of each other, allow ourselves to challenge what we believe is possible and find new ways to bring music to people so we will emerge from this pandemic and the treasures of music will resonate for generations to come. This is not about the state of the arts in 2020. This pandemic is challenging the path forward for the arts everywhere and in this new cultural landscape, post-COVID, how will we be better? Let's make sure that when it is safe to gather once more that we do not return to once, what once was, but that we are more meaningful, more musical, more special than ever. This is the reason why I play the viola today. Umagui himul misumida. 
I believe in the power of music too. We all believe so. 우리 용재 씨가 비올라만 잘 하시는 줄 알았더니 음. 말씀도 너무 잘 하셔서 음. 말씀이 약간 음악 같다. Let's support all of our musicians, you know, for for me standing here today, how many millions of people are suffering, our young musicians that are just trying to enter their careers that have no opportunity right now. It's a desperate, desperate, desperate time, and it's been a very, it's been an emergency. So thank you for letting me, me speak. Thank you very much. <laughs>